Hi guys, Solomon here. Uh, in today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to utilize Twilio's masking phone numbers capabilities uh, using Laravel as our framework of choice. Um, some use cases for using uh, Twilio's masked phone numbers uh, would be when you have a two-sided marketplace and you're trying to um, privatize sensitive data such as phone numbers or you know, it, not such as only phone numbers. Um, so think of, you know, there's some examples like Uber, Lyft, where there's, you know, you have a driver and you have a rider and say a rider wants to get in contact with the driver, um, Uber will show the driver's Twilio phone number while hiding their real phone number. So when a rider makes a call or a text to that Twilio phone number, um, all the data received uh, uh, within that text or call is then relayed to the driver's real number without exposing their, you know, real phone numbers. Um, so this can be very, very useful if you're building some type of two-sided marketplace. So that's what I plan on showing you guys how to work with today. So the first thing we got to do is we're going to have to create our application. So we'll say Laravel. We'll just say Laravel Twilio, and we're using 5.8 in this version. I know Laravel 6. You know, 6 plus has been out for a while, but my original repo was using um, 5.8, and so that's what I'm going to stick with in this tutorial. So we'll put that in, and I'll just pause that while that is creating. All right, so our application has successfully been created, and so the next thing we will want to do is we will want to import or require um, the Twilio SDK, uh, PHP SDK. So composer require Twilio SDK, let that install. Ah, so I had screwed up. So I accidentally um, did that in the wrong directory. So I'm going to, have to remove some of those files which, you know what, I'm just going to CD into the project, CD Laravel Twilio, and then rerun that. And then in the side, in my file explorer, I will delete those files. All right, so we have deleted that. And it's still up installing. All right, so that is successfully installed. Um, the next thing we will want to do is, or we actually already created our database, um, but you will want to create a database so that you can update your ENV file. So what I should probably do is I should open up PHP Storm and here we are. So I'll bring that over. So we have a blank slate of a Laravel project. Um, so the first few things we're going to want to add is we're going to want to add Twilio SID, Twilio token. And so these are just going to be our API credentials. Um, next thing we want to update is we're going to want to update, um, we're gonna to want to create a database. So I'm using Laragon, a an amazing um, environment for uh, Laravel and Symfony applications or anything PHP. Um, it's very similar to XAMPP, but just with a lot of better features. So think of XAMPP as, if you're familiar with Walmart, um, think of XAMPP as great value or off-brand, and then think of Lar uh, Laragon as your um, name brand or high quality stuff. Um, what I like about Laragon is you can use it for uh, Apache configuration. So instead of having to use local host, you can do, um, you can do app name .test and access it. Uh, you can also utilize the HTTPS protocol uh, using the 443 port. Um, you can also uh, tunnel your local host applications to the world using ng ROK or N grok or however you pronounce it. So um, I will, hi I highly recommend 
using Laragon if you plan on um, you know developing Laravel applications in the future. It's just it's an amazing tool. Um, I prefer it over things like uh, Vagrant as well, um, just because a uh, lot lot less steps. So yeah. So the first thing we want to do is we want to want to go into our database, and we're going to want to create a database. So we already had a test one earlier, but we're going to create a new database for our uh, current application. So we'll say Laravel Twilio. We'll run this query. I know the screen is small, so all I typed in was create database Laravel Twilio. If I refresh, um, here it is. So that has created. Um, cool. So I will update our ENV value for that. We will say Laravel Twilio say root, and then there's no password. And then I want to update our app URL. Um, and so I'm going to close some of these, whatever I have up here, uh, close that, close this on other screens. Sorry, that's just some things are kind of in the way right now. Um, What else do I have to do? All right, so the next thing I actually wanted to do was I wanted to kind of showcase that Laragon feature. So we're going to reload. And then what we're going to do is we're going to open up our browser and we're going to move that over here. And then we're going to put in Laravel dash Twilio dot or dot Twilio dot test. All right, and so here's our Laravel welcome screen. And then the nice thing we can do is we can also use HTTPS, which is great for, um, you know, you'll be able to develop on local environments now, uh, sometimes since a lot of packages require that you have to use HTTPS. So that's another nice thing about Laragon. So, um, but yeah, cool. So our environment is set up. So next thing we'll want to do is, and we already have our ENV values. We're gonna wanna open up our Twilio dashboard. And so I'm in my Twilio dashboard right now. Um, I'm using a trial account. It gives you like $15 in credit that you can use. So um, that's pretty awesome. Though there, there are some caveats with it. Like uh, you, you're only allowed one phone number um, and any text message that you make, it it's, uh, ends with uh, sent with Twilio trial account. And also with the phone numbers, it starts with sent with trial or called with Twilio trial account. So there's a few uh, downsides with it, but all in all, it's still a, a pretty, pretty nice trial thing. So first thing we want to do is we're going to want to copy paste our values, our uh, API values into here. So first we just did our SID. Next thing we want to do is our token. All right. And so we should be set there. And the next thing we want to do is we want to go to config services, create some values. So we'll call it Twilio and we'll say SID is going to be ENV Twilio SID and then token is going to be Twilio token. So we don't have, to, so we're just doing this so we don't have to directly use the ENV values. Um, and so, yeah, so we have our config and we have our ENV set up. So now we are ready to dive into the next thing. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we're going to set up PHP, our auth routes. So we're going to say PHP artisan make auth. Since I am using Laravel 5.8, that command will still work. If you're using Laravel 6 or above, you have to do some other steps with auth configuration, but it'll essentially be the same thing. Um, so yeah, so we just created our auth um, wrap routes and views. So if we go to resources, views, we see auth layout, auth and layouts and stuff like that. Um, what I like to do though with layouts is I like to separate a few things. So I like to have messages for, you know, if we have success messages or alert messages using the bootstrap alert, um, alert card, and then 
I'm also going to separate the nav bar. So uh, just because it's cleaner blade code and stuff like that. So we're going to do that real quick. So we're going to copy this whole nav bar. Copy. And we are going to paste it into here. And then within the app blade, we're going to say include nav. All right, next thing we want to do is we're going to want to have some messages to our users whenever an action is performed. So we're going to say messages dot blade. All right, I'm just going to copy it from my old repo, paste that into here. So it's saying if you have any errors, show an alert, a danger, you know, card. And then if it's a success, it'll show an alert success. So that's all that is. Um, next thing we want to do is we're going to want to actually be able to show that in our template or layout, I mean. So we're just gonna copy this. So basically what this is gonna do is just including our messages and wrapping that in a container. Um, so we should be set there. Uh, what else do we need? I'm going to need to edit a few fields within the register blade file. So we're gonna to wanna to add um, the phone number attribute. So this is just gonna, you know, just because our users, this is a Twilio phone tutorial, so we're gonna need to do that. All right, so that is set up. Um, what else we wanna do? We're gonna wanna edit a few things in our controllers. Went kind of going all over the place right here, but all over the place right now, but it's it should be fine. So we're gonna want to redirect to the root path, go to register, redirect to root path, and we want to use what do I call this phone and we're going to say phone data all right so now we should be able to go into our models and migrations. So we'll be able to, so let's go to database, migrations, user tables. So the thing we want to add is we're going to want to add in a few fields. So we're gonna say we want the phone number. So we say unique, so a user phone number, and then we're gonna have a user Twilio phone. And this can be nullable. So we don't require the Twilio phone unless you want it or unless you're you know interacting with the application so say nullable all right and so in our model we're just going to add in those two fields the phone and um twilio phone so i'm just going to copy this paste that say phone say twilio phone all right so that is set now if we run php artisan migrate all right, it has migrated our table and we can verify that checking out the database. So as you can see, I'm not sure, I mean, the screen is pretty small with my database. So basically this shows the migrations table, password resets table and users. And if we go to the users table, we see phone and Twilio phone. So that has been set up. Okay, cool. So the next thing we will want to do is we're going to want to set up some routes. So we're gonna change this over here. This will be the home, get rid of this. All right, uh, next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to add a few custom fields. So we're gonna to want to, so with this demonstration, I'm just trying to show the very basics of, you know, the Twilio masking the phone numbers. So there's not gonna be a lot of functionality in this application, so. Um, but the one thing that we're going to implement is we're going to implement assign a Twilio uh, phone number button. And so whenever they hit this route called assign, it's going to go to our home controller, access the assign function, and we're going to call this assign. All right. So we still have to create that function in our controller, but that's what that's going to be. So those routes will be in our web and then in our API, um, API file, we're going to have two routes. So we're gonna have um, SMS, webhook controller, 
we're going to create a controller called a webhook controller, of course. Um, so we're going to have two functions. We're going to have SMS, name it SMS. All right. And we're also going to have um, we'll, we'll call it call call webhook controller. And the function will be call and we'll call it the name call. All right. So these controllers and functions still have yet to be made. And so that's going to be next up on our to do list. Um, well, actually, I take that back. Um, if we go to the web, um, no, yeah, never mind. Never mind. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'll shut up for a second. Uh, no, the next thing we want to do is we're going to want to create a service. So our Laravel, we're going to create a phone number. That's what our service is going to create a phone number for our user. So we're going to call it services. And we're going to call it the directory Twilio. And we're going to say number. All right. So since we're going to want to use the Twilio REST client, so we'll say use client, where is it at? Twilio REST, all right. So we're going to utilize some static variables and static methods. Um, since I'm not using the actual uh, Laravel service, since I'm not use, utilizing providers as you normally would with services, I'm just going to use static methods. Um, so the first thing we want to want to do is we want to want to create a static variable called client. And that's just going to initialize our Twilio client, and the type of variable it will be is Twilio client, of course. Client. All right. The second thing we want to do is we want to create a variable, not a variable, but a function called set client. So static function set client. All right, and so if we want to access that client variable, we'll say self client is equal to new client. And so this, uh, I spelled it wrong, client. All right, so client takes in two parameters. Um, it's going to take in our account SID. So we'll say, and we set that in our config or services config. So we'll say services.twilio dot sid and i'm just going to copy this and do the same for token and call it token all right so basically we, we just initialize a twilio client and it looks like it throws an exception so i'm going to comment that so it throws twilio configuration exception all right so the next the main uh function that we have is going to be called create so public static function Create, and so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the client. So set client, all right, and then we're going to want to get a list of available numbers. So list of numbers. Create a variable called numbers. Access that client variable. Say client available phone numbers. Our country code will be the U.S. We will want a local phone number instead of a toll number. And our options are going to be area code, which I am in the Twin Cities metro area. So I'll just say 612, as that is one of our area codes. And so that gets us a list of phone numbers. And so the next thing we want to do is we're going to want to grab that first number and assign um, or return um, that specific phone number. We just want to return one phone number. So we're going to create a variable called number. And we're going to access that client variable. We're going to say incoming phone numbers. And we're going to create a phone number. And it takes in three options. So we're going to have phone number, numbers, zero. So um, it's an array of objects. So if you look at this, yep. So our IDE is calling this variable an array of objects. So we're going to grab the first object. In the array and then we're going to grab its phone number attribute all right 
Next thing we want to do is we want to assign a SMS URL. And this is basically Twilio's, um, this allows Twilio to send payloads to our uh, via, or I mean, send uh, payloads via webhooks. So it just sends data to our specific URL and our application then handles uh, any of the, you know, application logic that needs to handle, which we will add in our webhook controller soon. So the route was, will be SMS and with the voice URL, you know what, it might be a good idea to rename that route voice. So we're going to go back to that route or the API routes and we're going to call this voice, change that, change that. All right. So we should be set. All right, so this is also an object. It's not an actual phone number quite yet. So the first thing, lastly, I mean, we're gonna to want to return it as a phone number. So we're gonna access the phone number attribute and return that. Looks like we still have, we have some uh, exceptions that we might have to catch later on. So we're just gonna comment that out. Um, so we have Twilio exception and the configuration exception, all right? So our service is now created. Um, the next thing we will want to do is we're going to want to go to the, our home controller. And we want to be able to assign our users or assign a user a Twilio number. All right. And so the way we're going to do that is since the home controller requires a user to be logged in, we're going to say we're going to get that user. All right. And if they already have a Twilio number, we'll say we're going to return a, an error, not an error, but we're going to return like an error alert to the client saying, yo, you already have a Twilio number. So if null return back with error, you already have a Twilio number. All right. And so if they don't have a Twilio number, we're going to want to do the, we're going to want to do a try catch block since our service throws some exceptions. So we're going to want to catch those exceptions. All right. So the first thing we're going to want to do is if successful, we're going to create, a, what the heck? Oh, there we go. What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create the phone number. So using our Twilio service that we just created, say create, returns a phone number, and then user, we want to update their Twilio phone, and we're going to say, or we're going to sign it to the phone, we're going to sign that phone number to their Twilio phone, which we just did, and then if successful, we're going to return back with a success alert saying, phone number has been assigned to you. And if there's an error, we're going to basically return back saying, hey, this is an error and this is our error message using the um, exception message. All right. So this uh, will be a button on the dashboard, uh, basically saying, get a Twilio phone number. Um, and this is what that function is going to be. So if we go back to the web.php, here is our, here's where we're setting it. Um, so that's the um, assigned controller, it looks like, and we should be good there. Um, the next controller we're going to want to create is probably the most important controller because this is actually doing the uh, routing for you or it's doing the uh, masking for you. Um, so it's, we're going to call it webhook controllers. So we're going to say PHP artisan make controller webhook controller. And it's going to have two functions as we mentioned in our API.php within the routes uh, directory. So we're going to say public function SMS and we're going to say public function um, voice. So this is sending text messages and this is 
making phone calls. Um, so the logic that we're going to have is, um, it's gonna be very similar between the two. Um, we're gonna to wanna to add in, since it requires a request payload, I'm going to show you that in a second. So yeah, for the SMS payload, we wanna add in um, the request attribute, and we'll do that for voice as well. So I will show you what an example payload looks like from Twilio and their webhook. So this is what Twilio sends to your using Postman. Um, this is the body that they send to you, your uh, route. And so we will just, we're gonna take in a few, we're only gonna use a few things. A lot of the other stuff is just metadata uh, that we don't really care for. Um, but I will show you uh, what parameters that we have to use. So, well, the first thing we gotta do is we're gonna have to initialize a Twimmel body or Twimmel voice response. It's not really just voice response, but it allows you to actually do the masking and um, texting and phone calling as well. So, yeah. Um, so the first thing we wanna do is we're gonna wanna find a user by searching for their Twilio number. So if we look at the body, back over here, if I bring that back over here, the first thing we have is the to field. So this is um, the Twilio number that the person is trying to either text or call. And so this is what is saved in our database as for one of our users. It's not the, their user's actual phone, but it's the user's Twilio phone. So what we wanna do is user is equal to user where Twilio phone is equal to that request to field. So that's the Twilio number, of course. Um, and then we want to grab the first user with it. If the user is null, we're going to um, return a 400 response, basically saying no number found. And you can put four, four or four or 400, it doesn't really matter. We just gotta let the person know that um, a bad request was made. And so, but if the, if a user with that Twilio number is found, what we wanna do is we want to dial that phone number for the person. So we will dial that number. And this is where the important part, we're gonna use the user's actual phone number to dial. So basically we found, so based off of their Twilio number, we're finding their real number and we're dialing that. And we're doing all of this on the back end without exposing the user's real phone number um, to other people. So, yep. And the next thing we wanna do here, I should probably comment, say call users real phone number. All right, next thing we wanna do is just a nice thing to let the user know that the voice call is ended. So a robotic voice is going to say goodbye when the phone call ends. Just letting the person know that the call is ended. So we'll say response, say goodbye. All right. And then lastly, the most important part is we need to return. So the response needs to be, the response header needs to be content type text XML. So if you do not do that, um, you're, it will not work. You're gonna get a lot of debug, you're gonna get some errors within your Twilio console saying, hey, this, you know, this webhook call failed. And so I've had, you know, hours upon hours where I was trying to figure out why uh, this wasn't working. And it was just because I wasn't specifying the content type. So we have to return response, oops, uh, with helper function response from Laravel. And then we're gonna return the response as XML. And then within our header, or we're gonna assign a header, and we're gonna say content type text slash XML, all right?
And so, oops, so I mix, it looks like I ended up mixing SMS with voice. So I'm, this is actually voice, a voice call. So I'm gonna sign this as voice and we're gonna say this is SMS over here. So basically, yeah. So once again, um, a Twilio payload is being hit or our, our Twi Twilio is hitting our uh, route voice with a payload. And in that payload, I will bring it up again. We have all of this data. And in this data, we really just care about the two field and who they're trying to contact. And that two field should be a Twilio number. And with that Twilio number, we should then be able to find our user based off of that Twilio number uh, because it's saved in our database. If that user is found, we will return a you know bad call or we'll just say for a 400 error, like, yo, this. We couldn't find that number; it doesn't exist, or the user, a user with that number, doesn't exist. But if it does, we will call a user's uh, real phone number based off of you know, because we have their real phone number in our database. Um, and then when the phone call is ended, a robotic voice will say goodbye, and the phone call will end. And then we will return that response, you know, all that data as XML, uh, and then we'll specify that it's type text XML. Uh, to the Twilio API. All right. So the next thing we should be able to do is we're going to do the same thing with SMS. So we're just going to copy this part over here, place that into here. And so instead of dial, we're going to do SMS. We're going to say request. Oh, so I should probably specify. So there's two types of payloads. There's SMS payload and there's a phone call payload. Um, in Postman, I think I was showing you the SMS payload. Yep, so this is an SMS payload. It's almost identical to the phone call payload. It's just It just has this body field over here and then it shows like the status. It shows SMS ID, SID, SMS status, SMS message ID. And the phone call, it shows a little bit different. So um, there's that. Um, but other than that, yeah, so with the SMS, this is where our body is created. This is where the text message content is. So we're going to access that by saying, we're going to do response SMS. And we're going to say, we're going to want to get that request body. All right. And then we're going to want to specify who that message is going to. And the message is going to our user, the, their real phone number. So it's basically the same exact thing. So send text message to real user number. And we won't have to say goodbye this time since it is a text message. But we'll just copy this and return it as XML as well. All right, so looks like we're set there. All right, so the last thing we will want to do is we're going to want to edit our home uh, blade file, just allowing a user to sign themselves a phone number. And so I'm just going to copy paste that from my old repo. And I'm just going to, all it's going to show, it means essentially the same thing as the default home page. All it shows is, it still shows the dashboard, but there's a uh, conditional statement added within the blade file. And so what's added is it checks if a user's Twilio phone number is null. If it's null, we're going to show them a button. We're going to show them a, uh, a get a Twilio number button. Or else if they do have a Twilio number, it's going to say, here's your Twilio phone number. And it's going to show them their actual Twilio number. And then there's going to be a small note saying, call it with a different number. Um, in my case, since I'm the only one at my house right now, I'm probably going to end up calling myself because when you call the Twilio number that's assigned to your phone number, you end up calling yourself. And the same thing happens when you text message, you know, you end up text messaging yourself, which is a bit strange and isn't, you know, realistic in the real world. But just for testing purposes, we just want to show them our code is working. So what we want to do is we're going to want to, I'm going to go check my Twilio console, check if my phone, oh, this is the debugger. I want to go check my phone numbers, if I have any phone numbers. 
because if I have, because like I said, with the Twilio um, free trial, you only get one free phone number. So if I already have a phone number in there, an error is going to be thrown when I try to create it in our application. So it looks like we don't have any active numbers. So we should be able to test. So I'm going to drag this over, create a new tab, bring that over, and we're going to access Laravel Twilio test. All right. And so here we are. I have to register because I don't have an account. And so we'll say John Doe, this is our real phone number. Say password, password, register. All right, so we've created an account. So here's our dashboard. This is the only view that we really have. And so I don't have a Twilio number so far, so I can get a number. So I will click get a number and that is loading. All right, a phone number has been assigned to you. We will drag our Twilio console over here. We'll refresh the page. All right, so it looks like we have a Twilio phone number. Um, and it assigned us, it assigned the, it assigned the Twilio webhook URL. So since we are on localhost, if you try this right now, it would not work just because um, Twilio cannot access uh, your local host, your local machine. And so you're gonna have to fix that um, in, if you want to actually test it out. So I'm going to do a few things real quick. All right, so if we do want to do some testing, what we will wanna do is we're gonna, we're gonna use, end up using Postman. And so this is the SMS payload. So we'll test that out. So it looks like we're getting an error, no number found. Um, the request to, okay, if we drag that over, look at that, compare the two. All right, the numbers are right. Let's check our code. Go to Webhook Controller. <clears throat> and it's looking like the reason why is because I'm not using capital. So it requires a capital two, and we should also put that up here. All right, and let's give it another test. All right. One second. So <clears throat> this response, so this is what um, Twilio would expect. Um, it's expecting this. And so it's looking like our local, since it's working on our local right now, what I'll be able to do is I will be able to use Laragon and NG Rock um, to tunnel our local host to the public web to test this out with Twilio. And so what we're going to do is we're going to open up Laragon, go to our menu, go to www, go to share, and find your project, which is Laravel Twilio. And so what that ended up doing was it ended up creating a tunnel where we can access um, the URL or access um, our application, our local host application on the web. And so the way we will do that is we're going to copy, well, I can't copy it with this terminal, which kind of sucks, but basically um, you'd use this URL right here or this one right here to access or to allow Twilio to actually test your application. And so I'm going to copy that, paste that into here, see if everything looks correct. D2A77C05.ngrock.io. All right. And it looks like, okay, cool. So we have our URL or we have our application working. Uh, what kind of sucks about NGROC, if you're using the free version, you only get 20 connections per minute. So if you do too many requests at one time, um, you'll get an error page saying, hey, upgrade to um, the premium versions so you can have more connections per minute. And so um, we're not really going to be exploring uh, the application here, but we are going to copy this URL and we're going to drag the Twilio uh, tab over here. And so we're going to edit this phone number. And like I said, this is 
only just because we're using our local host to test this application. This is the only reason why I'm changing it, the values. You would never really have to actually change those values um, if you were to use, if it's using, if it's on a production server, because Twilio would then be able to actually access your route. So say it's laravelatwilio.com, it could access it. So yeah, but like I said, since we're testing it out, we've got to change these values, change this value as well. All right, save. And so the first thing I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to try to call this phone number right here, the 612 number, and see if I get if I get a phone call to myself. So type that in 612-509-9764. Call it. Have the Verizon is the Verizon wireless intro. Nine, zero, 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 eight. You have a trial account. You can remove this message at any time by upgrading to a full account. Press any key to execute your code. Testing, testing. So ended up, yep, so it looked like I ended up calling myself which I guess that, yep, that actually worked. So let's go to our Twilio logs. See if I can find the logs. Usage. Um, how can I find the logs right now? One second. So I'm trying to figure out where to go for the logs, but I also realized another error had happened. Um, so if I go back to my code and I update this, update this. So it should be actually, it should be regular just two and this should, this should be body. And um, the only reason why those were capitalized was because the way I had copied them over from Twilio and put that into here. So. Um, that was a mistake on my part. So, yeah. Um, but then we should be able to test out the text message. And so what we'll do is I'm going to text that phone number and see if I receive any errors or if I get a success or a success. So we are going to text that number and we're just going to say hi. Um, message, say hi. So we sent a message. All right, and so, oh, what the heck? So let's go to Twilio, and it looks like there might be a debugger issue. So go to debugger, an error has occurred, and what has happened? So a bad request has happened, so no number found. Um, and what number did I just text? Five zero nine nine seven six four. Oh, so I guess I am wrong. I guess, dang, why is that? That is so weird. They should really fix this this issue. They shouldn't. It shouldn't be capitalized. That's just that's bad. That's bad semantics on Tulio's part. That's really sucky. So I'm going to test that out again and see if I get another issue. Let's go back to the debugger. Right, let's see events actually. All right, so we'll test it again. Try to text him, say hey. And then it said, okay, cool. So it looked like it worked. So it said sent from your tri Twilio trial account and then dash, hey. So I got a, so I ended up texting myself, which like I said, this isn't, you know, that wouldn't be actually happen in a real world situation, but just because I'm by myself, uh, it's the only way I can really test it out right now. Um, but um, yeah, so this is awesome. Um, this is a lot, a lot longer than I had expected. Um, so I'm gonna probably break it down uh, within the comment section showing um, you know, each individual part of the application. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of how, that, that's how you would, utilize your Twilio webhook
or not Twilio webhook, but how you would mask phone numbers uh, using Twilio. Um, I will have the GitHub repo on there so that you can test it out as well. Um, what else? And yeah, so that's really that's really the gist of it. Um, we did all that in about 45 minutes, so, which is kind of long for a video sense, but um, when you're actually developing, you know, if you, 45 minutes is amazing time. That's, you know, this, this is a whole new feature that you could have just implemented into your application right now. So that's amazing. But yeah, so if you guys have any questions or concerns, um, just com you know, comment below, help me out, um, as well as if you like the video and like videos like this, you know, like and subscribe. Uh, so I can keep making videos like this. Um, I'm glad I could help you got any of you guys out. Um, and you guys have a good day. Thank you. Bye. -bye.